First Kings chapter 21. And it came to pass, after these things, we've read so far, that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard. A vineyard in the Bible would be a type of Israel, but a place of grapes. I don't know, you know, wine or anything like that, but he had a vineyard, a fruitful place, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace, and we'll get the definition in a moment, of Ahab, king of Samaria. All right, here's Ahab again. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs. Now, this would be practically very much in these times. Houses would have in their backyards, like today, they would have gardens and, you know, provide vegetables for their food and all that but it was also to be a note now the bible doesn't say but it's also a note that ahab's already made allegiance with syria ben hadad who was an enemy of god enemy of israel it was customary in syria to have such lavish herb gardens and if we were to look at that is not only just a herb garden for ahab if this is the case, I mean, Ahab has a palace. But it would look like that with a vineyard being fruitful grounds and fertile soil on that, that would be my desire. And look what it says here. Because it is near unto my house. And verse 1 says hard by the palace. Verse 2 gives you the, the definition. It's right next door to Ahab's palace. And he's like, well, here's this good, fruitful property. I am coveting this land. What it is, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not cover thy neighbors. The violation of the Tenth Commandment. Now, whether he's doing it because he likes herbs, whether he's doing it because this is a Syrian way, I cannot tell. But it was an interest to see that Syrians would go fully out. Not just to have a herb garden, but to have a herb garden. Herbs. Because it's near to my house. So sometimes, many times, the Bible will give you its own definition. Now this is a close one. Now the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Sometimes you'll find the answer in Samuel in Kings. Sometimes you may find it in Chronicles. Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles, if you were to study that, that will give you sometimes definition. Like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. you got to read the entire Bible to get an answer. And I will give thee for a better vineyard than it. Alright, so Ahab is not walking up to Naboth and imminent domain. It's not, he's taking it by force. He said, listen. I want your vineyard. I'll offer you a better vineyard. Well, why didn't he take that vineyard that is better? And if it's better than a vineyard that Naboth had, well, boy, you can grow herbs. Well, it's closer, I guess. But I'll give you a vine better vineyard than it. Or, if it seemed good unto thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. I'll give you money. Worth of it. Now, eminent domain is, we'll give you half the value of your property, and we're going to take it by force. There's no yes or no. We're going to take it. Ahab's like, hey, listen, I'll give you a better vineyard, or I'll give you the price of the field. It's a free will. He's not going to go in with troops. He's not going to go in there with the army. He's not going to go in there with lawyers. And David said to Ahab, the Lord forbid me. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, the law. That I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Now, Leviticus 25, 23, a couple places here. Leviticus 25, 23. Naboth is completely 100% right. Ahab's wrong. Already we've seen Ahab coveting. I mean, that's the first 10 laws that God gave the Israelites. 
And we get into Leviticus 25, 23. Leviticus 25, 23. The law. This is God. The land shall not be sold forever. All right, I can't, you can't give me the price for it, King. I, I cannot sell it. For the land is mine. For ye are strangers and sojourners with me. All right, I can't sell it. Other places. Numbers 36, 7. So, Naboth can't take it. Naboth is a law-abiding, I was going to say Christian, but child of God, 36, 7 numbers, in Israel. So when Elijah says, oh, I'm the only one here, no one's serving God, and I think God said that there's like a 1,000 or 700 like that, that would have been Naboth, one of them. And if Naboth is obeying the law, as far as we see with the land, listen, this is not just, okay, I'm going to keep this commandment and keep that commandment and not going to do that one. The guy is face to face with the king that can cut off his head. The king has power unlike the presidents and the rulers of the nations today. There are nations still today, if you defile that king or that ruler, whatever that title would be, you're dead. You're in prison. There are places that if you were to go preach the gospel and the, <coughs> and the country catch you, you're going to be sentenced. Naboth is standing before the king that can kill him. No constitution, no rights or anything like that. And he says the law. Well, I guarantee Naboth follows more than just one law. And no, Numbers 36, verse 7. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel. Okay, here we go. Remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself the inheritance of the tribe of his father. So Naboth, when he says, I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto you, he is quoting the law. Which would show you the fact that, I mean, he's not quoting verbatim. He don't have the copy of the scrolls in his house to read every day. But he knows the point of the law. And then, now a part in the Bible that Ahab would not have, Ezekiel 46, 18. Now this would not be for Ahab, but this is what God says. And this would be, in, if it would be in the time, it's not, for Jezebel. But she's coming up. Ezekiel 46, 18. Again, the time that we're reading now is about 900 B.C. Ezekiel 574 B.C. So Ahab, Naboth, Jezebel are long dead. But Bible with Bible, 46, 18. Moreover, the prince shall not take the people's inheritance by oppression to thrust them out of their possession. No imminent domain. But he shall give his son's inheritance out of his own possession, that my people be not scattered every man from his possession. Now that's in the millennium. That would be David. David in the millennium can't go up and say, hey, I like that, like Ahab done. I'm, you know, it's mine. You know, David did that with, with a man's wife. Hey, I like her. Go get her. So there it is. We also have a couple passages in the Bible where Ahab would have a copy. The Proverbs of Solomon. Solomon's been long dead. The, the pro, and one of the kings hasn't come up for the, for the copying of the Proverbs, but you would think that we get out. And it says Proverbs 22, 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Now, he may not have had this, or he may have had it. I forget which kings copied from Solomon's. And then Proverbs 23, verse 10, Remove not the old landmark, and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. So the Bible does command, the Bible does set forth that property of Naboth. First Kings 21, that's Naboth. 
that would be Naboth's sons, if not his sisters, I mean his daughters. And we were have no sons and daughters. The Bible had prescribed that it would go to the nearest next family kin of that tribe. So Ahab is asking out of order, but he's not forcing. There is a free will. And Naboth has come back and said, hey, listen, the law forbids me. And Ahab came into his house heavy. Poor baby. Really poor baby. Look at chapter 20, verse 43. After the prophets come to him. Chapter 20, verse 43. And the king of Israel went to his house heavy and displeased. So this is an action that when Ahab does not get his way, he starts going, uh, he goes into a big, bad mood, depression, kind of, I'm, oh, woe, woe is me, I didn't get my way, suck my thumb and wet my pants. It's not a very good character to be if you're like that when you're following Ahab. He should have, okay, David, I understand, thank you very much for reminding me, I understand where you're coming from, I thought I'd just ask. That's in the deal. No more. Done with it. Not going to bother your neighbor. But Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. Because of the word of Naboth, the Jezreelite, has spoken to him. For he has said, now watch this. This is a very liberally. God is reminding Ahab through his conscience and through his ears to his heart. I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. That's quoting the law. God is speaking to Ahab. Naboth has spoken right. <laughs> Settle that down in your heart. You can't have it. And he laid him down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. He's having a pity party. He's acting like a big baby. I didn't get my way. And then, verse 5, <laughs> But Jezebel, here comes Jezebel. And every time she's come on the site, she's troublemaker. And as we look at Jezebel, as we study Jezebel until she becomes dog poop. Every time she comes up, let's look at her. Let's see if she ever comes, as we're to study the Lord willing, chapter by chapter. Let's see if we can ever find Jezebel doing right, and I don't think we ever find her doing right. She's not going to do right now. Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad? Well, look at that. Spirit. It's not the body. It's not the soul. You can have in your spirit, Oh, woe is me. Oh, everybody's against me. That's a spiritual condition. And when you've got that condition, there's only one thing that can help that spirit. God. The Bible. No doctor, no man can touch your spirit. No crossing your legs and going muba juba and burning incense and, and eating whatever and selling man, whatever you do. None of that is going to control the spirit but the Bible and God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And it's to the point that she's looking at her husband, he's laying in bed, he's the other way and that thou eatest no bread. So it's been reported to her. He's not eating. I'm not going to eat nothing. And he said unto her. I can just imagine. Is he in tears? Is he so? I mean how is. Because I spoke with the neighbors. The Jesuit. <laughs> and he said unto me. Give me thy vineyard for money. Or else. If it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered me, I will not give thee my vineyard. That's a lie. Look at what Naboth said in verse 3. Lord forbid me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Look at the Holy Spirit working upon Naboth. Verse 4. I will not give the inheritance of my fathers. Both of them are scripture. Honey. I will, I will not give it thee my vineyard. That's not what he said. Ahab has given us the modern version of what Naboth has said. 
What? Now there's going to be trouble following. What if they have had told Honey Bunch, Queenie Weenie, the law says I can't have it. I just get out of this bed and go eat, go have something to eat. Because you know what? I'm being in full. Which he is. And Jezebel, his wife, every time her name is mentioned, said unto him, Dost thou not govern? That's the first time that word shows up. Govern. The kingdom of Israel? Oh, well, yes, you do. Arise, get off that bed, and eat bread. Stop it. And let thy heart be merry. If that, you know, he's sad contents. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth and Jezreel. Uh, honey, didn't you just say, does that thou govern? Are you not the ruler? Yeah, I am. I will take care for you. Ahab is a puppet king in the hands of Queen Jezebel. He goes home and says, Honey, your prophets of Baal are dead. Elijah did it. I'm going to kill that boy. I'm going to get him. God's do so much. And Ahab never says anything. I will go take care. I will get you that vineyard. And he never says anything. He is ruled by the wife. The Bible says the wife is, I mean, the woman is not to usurp the authority over the man. She is. I know that's written many, 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 many years later. So Ahab is a puppet under Jezebel. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreel. What gives you that right? You're not the governor. You're the queen. So she wrote letters. That's funny. That's the first time letters shows up in the Bible. It's a letter of death. You say, well, about David. That was a letter, I believe. This is letters. More than one. In Ahab's name. So there are some wives out there will sign their husband's name. Is it right? This is the first time a, a, a wife has ever done it in the Bible, and the first wife that does it is Jezebel. Now you tell me. Now there's a law in the Bible, the first time a word shows up, first time a, a, a situation shows up in the Bible. Let's read more. And sealed them with his seal. That's the first time seal shows up in the Bible. And what do we do? She take an envelope. She would close it, and he would take a bead of wax, put it on, you know, the backside of the envelope, and he would take his ring, and you would put it in that wax. It would leave the emblem of that ring. Sealing would be like, you know, you lick it, or if you peel that that strip off and you close it up, and nobody can open it without knowing that the letter has been opened. But she seals it with the king's emblem. That's very important that when we come to these city people. There is no reason why they should doubt. No one should have this ring or this necklace, whatever Ahab has for this seal. No one should have it but him. It ought to be on his finger or around his neck. Not in Jezebel's hand. That's important when we come back to another night. Lord willing. And sent the letters unto the elders. So there was a postal service. In the Old Testament, Benjamin Franklin did not come up with the first postal service. It has been in the Bible. When we come to the book of Esther, Lord willing, there is a postal service, the Pony or Camel Express, getting letters out to all the provinces. So when they teach you the schools about Benjamin Franklin and the Pony Express, they violate the scriptures. There have been letters going all through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, So, here we go. Sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city. That would be Je Je uh, Jezreel. Dwelling with Naboth. All Naboth's neighbors, friends. She wrote in the letters, saying, okay, here's the letters. Proclaim a, fa uh, uh, proclaim a fast. Let's get religious. 
what it is. A fast was a religious event. Let's do a fast. And set Naboth on high among the people. Cheer him on. Carry him through the crowds. Make a statue for him. Give him, you know, the, the Tony Award. Give him the, the Best Father of the Year Award. Give him some kind of award. Just lift him up. Let's get all the people together. Let's have a cake and fellowship. Let's have, you know, Naboth is the one. Why didn't Naboth ever just realize that there's trouble coming? What did he do to, to deserve this? And set, now this is still the letters, to set two men. Oh, so Jezebel does know the, know the law. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three shall it be established. We're talk She's talking about capital punishment. She knows that the Jewish law is you have to have two men. Two men only. You don't need three. Sons of Belial. And these are just the wicked of wicked of wicked of wicked of wicked of wicked. They're just. They have no being to be with the people of Jezreel. They're outcasts. But go get two of them. Before him. Step up right in front of him. To bear witness against him. You're going to false accuse him. You're going to lie under oath. You're going to perjure yourself. Find two men that will do it. They did that with Jesus Christ. Problem with, with the people that came up to witness against Jesus, the Bible records, they could not agree with each other. <laughs> they're fighting about what lies they're telling. So, still with the letters. Here's the lie. Thou would be Naboth. This blasphemy, God, <laughs> well, give her the credit. She put God first with a capital G. He blasphemy Jehovah with two men. Exodus 22, 8. Exodus 22, 8. Now, you couldn't say he blasphemy Baal. Why? And that don't look right. 22, 22, 28. Let's say, yeah, 22, 28. Why could not Baal work? Because evidently the people in Jezreel loved and honored God of the Bible. And if they were to come up and say, Naboth, blasphemy Baal, they'd probably pat him on the back even more. All right. All right, good boy. Let's go serve God. It says in 28, Thou shalt not revile, scorn, or criticize the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. She's going to say, God and the king. Leviticus 24, 15. Leviticus 24, make sure 15. She knows a little law. Twenty four, fifteen, and 16. Thou shalt not speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his, capital G, God, there it is, shall bear his sin. And he that blasphemy the name of the Lord, there is Jehovah, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall stone him, so there it is. There's Jezebel knowing the law to get rid of this, this, this man that's bothering her husband. And she says, G, capitalize God, according to Leviticus. And the king, Exodus. You know, I shall not revile the gods. Well, that was her God, Baal. Or the ruler of the people. So she took half that verse out of context and then took Leviticus 24, 15, and 16. So I got it together. We'll nail them on two charges. For definitely, now he will be stoned. Because if these people love God, Jehovah, that you couldn't say Baal, well, they're also going to say, hey, you can't 
as bad as our king is, as bad as a public leader he is, as much as a bill in the office of the presidency and, and his wife is that, as bad as he is, hey, you still got to honor the king. And when you picked on the presidency of a man who was a puppet under his wife in the office of the White House, you are still under the charge of the Bible says you're not supposed to mock, you're not supposed to ridicule, you're supposed to pray for your leader. I mean, that's what God says. And mocking the king, king never mind, blaspheming God and the king, was a charge of death in the Old Testament. And God thought so much that if you were to mock the king, the ruler of the nation, even though he's wicked, that was death in the Old Testament. Hey, listen, Christian, that's going to be wood, hay, or stubble before the judgment seat of Christ. You're not going to get a reward for mocking the king. It's in the Old Testament, and it's in the New Testament. Jesus in the gospel said, hey, let me see, well, whose picture is on that coin? Well, Caesar. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar. Render the things that are God, God. Here's God, and here's Caesar in this verse. Not once did you hear Jesus or any of the disciples in the book of Acts or the Pauline epistles or the, or the epistles of, of Peter, James, John. Never have you seen them once yet mock any of the rulers in the nation. One time Paul spoke to the high priest. They smacked him in the face, and he kind of like apologized. He says, I wish you weren't, because... The scripture says you're not supposed to make fun of the rulers. I'm not quoting that completely. That was kind of a kind of apology, and then he realized who his crowd was, sad to see, and then he, he broke away from it. But even Paul acknowledged he was doing wrong before the high priest. The high priest was wicked. The high priest turned Jesus Christ over to the nation. Paul says, Well, I'm kind of sorry. It was wrong. The scriptures say I was wrong in the book of Acts. So God and the king. And then carry him out. We're still in the letter. Carry him out. And stone him. <laughs> Leviticus 24, 15, and 16. Jezebel knows part something thereof of the law. Now whether somebody came in and said, Jezebel, this is what you need for Naboth, I don't know. But there's the law. You're talking to a group of people who probably follow the law. Again, it says God, Jehovah. It probably would not work a veil. If she's got to quote the law to them. The law forbidden Baal worship. Verse 11. Okay, the letter's been delivered. It's been open. It's been read. And the men of the city, even the elders and the nobles who were in the inhabitants of his city, Jezreel, it's his hometown. It's where he grew up. They knew him in the grocery stores. They knew him in the markets. They knew him in temple. They knew him walking out. Hey, Naboth, how you doing? Your children doing a little better? Heard they're sick. Oh, yeah, my wife's doing okay. Hey, Naboth, that vineyard, can I get some grapes if I give you some wheat next week? Okay, thank you, Naboth. Appreciate it. Man, that Naboth, man, that guy's honest. Man, he gives you more grapes. And, you know, if you brought grapes that got rotten, he, he, he'd make it good. Man, you see his family? I mean, they're, they're faithful. They love the Lord. They do right. Hey, everybody, this is his own city. Did as Jezebel has sent unto them. Now, why would they do what this letter says to do? Verse 8, it was sealed in the king's ring. As far as they know, the Holy Spirit said what Jezebel did. They look at that letter and say, wow. Are we to follow this? Let me see that letter. Let me see. Where's the envelope? It's over here. It's got the king's seal. The letter probably had the king's seal on it too. And listen, what that king says to do, we've got to do it. We can't despise God and king. And you can't say, well, God, because the charges in that letter is he blasphemed God and the king, which we just read by the Old Testament law was we got to kill him. 
What is our certification of this letter? The king signed it and sealed it. They had no idea Jezebel did it. They had no idea what Ahab had no idea. That's why that ring, that signet, whatever Ahab used, had no business in Jezebel's hand. These people are in. Yep, it's the king. It would never be in their mind that it was the queen or anybody else in the palace. But the Holy Spirit said, did as Jezebel. The Holy Spirit knows who did it. Though they don't. Has sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters, plural, which she has sent unto them. Here we go. They proclaim a fast. We got religious. And set Naboth on high among the people. Hail Naboth, all right, Naboth. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. Neighbor would like to give you a few words. And that moment he probably step up to whatever point, or, you know, they're patting on the back. He's, all right. Verse 13. Pay attention to verse 13 in the Bible. And there came two men, children of Belial. They are following what the king told them to do. Why? The king ordered it. And sat down before him. Here's Naboth. I don't know if he's standing. I don't know if he's sitting. But here these two men come walking in and pull up a seat right in front of him. And the men of Belial witnessed. Would you dare to think that witness there is the first time that word shows up? In the Bible. I witnessed the people. Do you know where it first showed up? It's a bunch of liars, Belial, wicked of wicked of wicked to be wicked. There it is. Against him. Even against Naboth. To make sure we, who we know we're talking about. Him, Naboth, right there. In the presence of the people. Here's all the people that's come to the celebration, whatever it is. Saying... Naboth did last me God and the king. That's a lie. That's the lie, but that's what they were paid to do, or maybe they weren't paid. And they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones. <laughs> we always fear. You can make sure you know, we know what. But that was Leviticus 24, 15, and 16. That he died. Second Kings nine twenty six. Second Kings nine twenty six. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Second Kings nine twenty six. Be not deceived, God's not mocked whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth. And the blood of his son, saith the Lord. And I will quite requite thee in the plat, saith the Lord. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of ground, according to the word of the Lord. There it is still. There it is. God still remembers that blood that was shed. Did not, when Abel was killed, did not God carry a conversation on with Cain and said, your, the blood of your brother cries out? We go to chapter two, uh, 2 Kings 9.26. Let's see, what's the date on that one? 9.26. America's in trouble. 9.26 is 8.84. Like I said, I don't know about this date. As good as any date, I can come up. 8.84 A.D. 180 years, this is to say. 180 years later. Naboth's blood is still crying out. Vengeance to God. Jezebel was not killed by the people for that lie. We're going to see Ahab was not killed for that lie. Those two men of Belial were not put to the, to the stoning themselves for lying. And they weren't died. The Bible says, the man that murders another man, that man's blood shall be shed. If not, you think Abel's blood is crying out, oh, that's, that's way, way, way back, long before the law. Uh-uh. 2 Kings 9.26, that blood is still crying out to God. 
And Jesus speaks about, I forget what, what his name is, but he says, from the blood of righteous Abel. And then there was another name spoken about that was, was murdered. Zacharias. That, that name still cries out. Paul says, if I committed any sin and any penalties worthy of death, I refuse not to die. Listen, that's this side of Calvary. And when you got America, where there's so much blood has been killed, has been murdered, has been put forth into the soil of this country, and they're still living up in hotel prison, or they don't have enough funds to find out who done it, or they have bribe the courts to get out of the charges, whether it be, you know, handing stuff like that, or their position of who they are and all that, they don't get sentenced. The blood of the persons that were killed on American soil still cries out. America, a Christian nation. Okay, we had a great re revival with, with white people coming through here. But how much blood of the separatists through New England and down to the Atlantic states have there been blood spilt of Bible-believing, born-again Christians by churches that has not been cleansed yet? You can't rightfully call this nation Christian nation when the blood of God's people has been spilt out. When you're in the book of Revelation, in the tribulation period, there are people who have had, had their heads beheaded for the word of God. And they're crying out at the throne. They're crying out at the altar. Lord God, will you avenge us? Not yet. And they're crying out in the time when the, four, four, the first four people on this planet Earth, Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve, and they're crying out in 2 Kings 9. If they're crying out in the, in the, in the great tribulation period, after the three and a half years, because it's after the three and a half years when they're going to start dying by the Antichrist, you think God's just going, oh, I don't see the church age murders. No, he don't see it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to, to forgive us and to cleanse us of our, of our unrighteousness. But what about the blood? Germany's in trouble. How much Jewish blood has been shed in Germany? By Germany. And the Nazi ravine. Nazis can't ever survive. I will curse them that curse you. And all the other nations that have killed Jews, God's people, with a curse to be put upon them for cursing the Jew. How much of their blood's being cried out? Verse 14. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stone and is dead. Man, that, that, you know that dead's really important there for Naboth. You imagine if they spent amount of time just stoning him and he just had to live with those pains, getting hit in the head, getting hit in all the bone, the knees and all that. After being stoned, you would wish you had been dead. He's dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that, Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise! Take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. Oh, they're not quoting up there's the law. For Naboth is not alive but dead. He even did dead with building his family. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But and it came to pass when Ahab heard that. Naboth was dead. Ahab rose to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession. Well, how did he die? I was just talking to him the other day. I was just having a conversation about that guy about that land you're talking about, dear. How did he die? There was no interest. There was no care. And like Tracy said, it's supposed to go to the family. Numbers 27.10. You would think you would ask, I, I, you know, don't you ever get astonished when you you just talk to somebody and you find out, wow, he died? And then they're like, whoa, how he, and when, that was usually the first question. How he, I just talking to him. Numbers 27, 10. 
Now, let's take for the fact, because it's not recorded, but we don't know. Let's say Naboth had no sons or daughters. Maybe he was a single man. All right? We don't know. And if he have no brethren, then shall he, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if fathers have no brethren, ye shall give it. It stays in the family. I mean, with 10 and 11, and we're not going to read the rest of, the rest of the 11, but that 10 and 11 is like, you will find somebody in this family. Naboth's family has not been wiped off the planet, okay? And if it has, go down to Jerusalem, say, to, get to the priest, say, hey, listen, this guy's family has been, I mean, going all, the way back to, going all the way back to Jacob, there's no more of his family left. We can't find it. And God would step in and say, okay, well, you know, this is what you need to do. But it don't go to the king. Deuteronomy 27, 17. Now, Deuteronomy is the second given in the law. Deuteronomy is written not to the ones that came out of Egypt. They're dead. Deuteronomy is written to the ones that are going into the land. You are going into the land by Joshua. I am going to die, Moses. Here is the law of Deuteronomy when you get in that. That's why Deuteronomy is a little different from Exodus and Leviticus. Because they're actually going in. So Deuteronomy 27, 17. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. Did not. 1 Kings 21 say, hard by the palace, near unto my house. Would that definitely not be in? Now listen, when the Bible speaks in the law about neighbor, that could have been somebody as far as Jerusalem, as far as Dan, as far as Bat. Hey, listen, your brothers. Your brothers under Jacob, Isaac, and, and Abraham. But would that not definitely be a neighborly cause that, hey, your property's right near my property. And it's count of the law. Listen, Ahab is still under the law, though Jezebel is a is a uh, Gentile and all that. Ahab is under the law, though he's Israel is separated, but though you got people who are following the law. Ahab's been cursed. Now let's look at Ahab. Verse chapter 20. He has made allegiance with the enemies of God and en enemies of Israel. In verse ch chapter 20, verse 42. And he said to him, Thus saith the Lord, because thou, thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appoint to other destruction. Therefore thy life shall go for his life. Look, you're on the death market of God. And thy people for his people. All right, let's take the fact that you kept that guy alive. Man, you, you're, you're death for him. And it came to pass. Now we get the story of Naboth. You have stolen. You have killed. We're going to look at that. Next time, Lord willing, you have killed a man, you have stolen his property, and according to Deuteronomy 27, 17, you are double cursed. You're not going to find Ahab in heaven. And for all those people say all people are going to heaven, I don't want to see Ahab and Jezebel in heaven. They're going to ruin it. Because what if I got to heaven and I had property next to Ahab? Oh boy. So he has a double curse. And everything in this section, 16 verses, we have seen the law. But the king and the queen don't see the law. She sees a law for the opportunity to get rid of. And we're going to pick this up next week. Um, next week. Next night, Lord willing. And we're going to find out, you know what? As far as husbands, you better be careful. You're going to be responsible for wives. And as far as if you did not do the deed, you... You had part in someone's murder, you're in charge. You'll be get the charge. 